It is June 28, 1957, the opening day of the Volksfest, the famous country fair in the Austrian town of Wieselburg. District Governor Hermann is greeted by a welcoming committee of prominent citizens of Wieselburg. The guest of honor, however, is Austria's federal chancellor, Julius Raab, who is being led through the fair by the mayor of Wieselburg and by local dignitaries. Only two years ago, Austria had been granted permanent freedom from the Allied occupation after World War II. Chancellor Raab was the chief negotiator of the Austrian state's treaty with the Allied forces. It is therefore a huge honor to have this prominent statesman present at the opening of the Volksfest in Wieselburg. It is also a special event for the school children who are greeting the federal chancellor with a heartfelt ovation. Now here are the first visitors to the festival. Two boys and three girls decided that they would like to have fun together. But the girls had to promise their parents that they would take really good care of the boys and bring them home safely. The girls hadn't seen each other for quite a long time it seems. Well, at least not for a day or two, so of course there's a lot to talk about. But the boys are not at all interested in the girls' stories. Come on, Herbert. We'll go ahead, says Hans. The girls will need to follow later. If we don't hurry, we'll miss the opening ceremony. And the opening ceremony with speeches by several guests of honor is already in full swing. Oh my goodness, so many people. How are we supposed to see the federal chancellor? The speeches are for the grown-ups. While the Chancellor is speaking, we could quickly check out some of these exciting attractions. There's a swing carousel, a jet plane ride, a variety show, painted balloons and so many other things. Oh look, the girls have finally managed to tear themselves away from their conversation and are mingling with the festive crowd. Chancellor Raab now has an important function to fulfill for Wieselburg, the long-awaited opening of the new arched bridge. Father Wattrober, supported by Chaplain Zöchbauer, is blessing the bridge that connects Festival Ground 1 with the second exhibition area on the other side of the River Erlauf. Did I forget something? No, not at all. It's now time for Governor Hermann to go ahead and cut the ribbon. What a joy! The Foxfest announcer Dr. Harreiter comments on the ceremony in his humorous way, allowing all visitors of the Volksfest to take part in this great event. Let's walk down from the bridge to a grand reception at the Frank Bar. Mr. Frank personally guides the Federal Chancellor into this very new and very modern attraction of the Volksfest in Wieselburg. And what are the plans that Hans and Herbert have pondered? Do you hear that? Where is this modern music coming from? We should go there, says Hans. And so the two of them are on their way into a little adventure, into their own Volksfest adventure. By now it has gotten a little too warm for the Federal Chancellor and he is very much looking forward to a cool seat in the beer tent. Look how beautiful these painted balloons are, and they fly! You have to be careful that they don't fly away. I would love to have such a balloon, but we don't have any money. Time to chat with the folks in Wieselburg, they know how to have fun. Herr Robert Thaler, head of the music group Linzer Burm, greets the Chancellor. Look, this is where the music is coming from, the variety show! We have to make money to get in. What is this guy doing? Wow, I've never seen a dancer like that. That's only possible at the Volksfest in Wieselburg. <music> Mr. Chancellor, a toast with Wieselburg a beer. And now the Linzer Boom are playing the Linzer Boom March. Herr Tyler, would you play please? And if you wondered, Linzer Boom stands for the boys from Linz. 
And now the highlight of the musical festival in the beer tent, presenting Annemarie Leitner, the yodeling singer of the Linzebohm. Not only can she yodel, she also dances, together with Robert Thaler. If that doesn't brighten your spirits and make you smile. Finally, a nice spin. Such fun won't come again anytime soon. Oh yes, the boys have really come up with quite the idea. Get paid to hand out flyers. That'll bring in a few shillings and if they work hard enough, there'll be some money for a jet plane ride. Probably also for a swing carousel ride and perhaps some for refreshments too. Let's make sure that enough people take our flyers. Speaking of refreshments, the girls are enjoying some ice cream. Well, there should have been some ice cream for the boys too. But the girls don't even think about that now. All they are doing is planning their visits to the next attraction. What did I say? Refreshments could be bought with the money the boys had earned. Do you still remember that orange drink called Libella? It came in these special bottles. That was my favorite drink at that time. My goodness, now I have given away my age. Don't you dare tell anyone. Back to the girls. What ride shall we try out now? The little carousel is too boring. Isn't there something else? Maybe something a little bit more exciting? Ha, <laughs> you guessed it. The swing carousel. Pay quickly and get in. We don't want to miss out on such an exciting adventure ride. A lot of people have warned us. The swing carousel ride is only for adults. One gets dizzy easily. People's clothes fly away. You can lose all your money from your pocket. Practically anything can happen. But here we are. Be dizzy? Oh no, we don't even have time to think about getting dizzy. This ride is only joy and happiness. After quenching their thirst, the boys now want to try out a jet plane ride. They earned the money for it, with hard work, so let them enjoy their highly anticipated ride. That's pretty high up. Could we maybe pass the helicopters? Thank goodness we don't get airsick easily. They didn't pass the helicopters. Well, maybe next time they'll make it, if they prepare really well. Hans and Herbert are not the only ones enjoying the rides and attractions at the fair. What's really interesting is, in 1957, people went to the Volksfest in suits, old and young alike. After the swing carousel ride, the girls are now looking for some variety. Maybe they will find it in the exhibition halls. What is being displayed here? Groceries, sausages, and a real dairy maid. What an interesting hat. May I try it on? This is not so easy. It takes a few tries to get it right. Do you think it fits me? What do you say? No? You can't even look at me in that hat? At any rate, it has gotten really hot in here. Hans and Herbert heard music in the distance. The brass band was marching something very special must be in store. The boys don't want to miss out on that. If we march with the music, then we'll certainly get to where this special occasion will be happening. See how proudly the brass band of Wieselburg is marching, and they are playing very well too. But what is all this for? 
We are having a distinguished visitor. Federal President Chef is escorted to the festival hall as a VIP guest of honor. It's unbelievable that we can see the federal president close up like that. We usually only see him in the newsreel in the movie theater. And now he's even giving a little speech. That's not happening every day. The folks in Wieselburg will remember this for a long time. Mr. Nemechek, the respected automobile dealer, has prepared a special display of the latest arrivals in his showroom. The girls surely haven't seen much of the federal president. Instead, they want to dream of their own car. Here is the Opel Capitaine, the latest model and the best car they can dream of. May I really sit in here? Yes, of course. Mr. Nemechek hopes for a new customer, maybe in a few years when the girls get their driver's license. Of course, Federal President Scherf is also invited to a glass of beer, but Hans and Herbert are not at all enthusiastic about it. After a long day at the Volksfest, they wonder who should take them home now. Where are the girls? Did they completely forget about us? We're supposed to be home by 6 o'clock. No sign of them. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day. Herbert suddenly disappeared too. He must also be hungry. Is he perhaps with the federal president in the beer tent? No, the girls are there, still fascinated by all these attractions. Good gracious, where are the boys? Did you see where they went? They were supposed to be following us everywhere. These rascals just went off on their own. No, it's our fault. We didn't pay enough attention and lost them. We have to find them quickly, otherwise we will be in trouble at home. Let's walk through all the exhibition areas, they have to be somewhere. Well, going through all of these exhibition areas trying to find the boys is not easy. There are hundreds of people. We must come up with a plan. Maybe they are at the children's rides. On the children's carousel, probably. Children's carousel. <laughs> That's way too boring if the girls only knew which rides the boys really selected. The jet planes were far more exciting. They wanted to try them out since they entered the fair. No sign of the boys. The only way to find them now is to have them paged. Herr Harreiter, could you please call the boys over the loudspeakers and tell them to come to exhibition ground number one as quickly as possible? Hans and Herbert are asked to come to the loudspeaker truck at exhibition ground number one. No success. Half an hour of searching and still no sign of the boys. Ah, here is one. What a relief. Thank goodness it's Herbert. Lonely and abandoned, he has been trying to pass time by playing domino with candy bars. Herbert, Herbert, have you been sitting here all alone all day? But where is Hans? He's hungry, he told me. He wanted to go home, and then he just ran off. Come on, let's go and look for him. In which direction did he go? In the direction of the River Erlauf. Well, they found one. The second can't be far away, they hope, at least. The bank of the river is here, next to the beer tent. Here he is, even lonelier than the other one, and quite depressed. Oh yes, it's rough when you're hungry and smell the rotisserie chicken from the beer tent. Come on, Hans. Time to go home. We've seen enough for today. Enough adventures to last a whole year until the Volksfest returns next year. It's evening in Wieselburg. Hans got home on time and nobody found out anything about the shenanigans at the fairgrounds. No reason to worry anyone, right? There's still something to do in the evening. Don't forget to take a bath. Yes, there was a little bath in a garden in Wieselburg at that time. Warmed up by the sun during the day, but then again quite cool in the evening. If you don't move properly, you'll get goosebumps.
dry yourself off and then dash into the house, otherwise you'll get really cold. Can't you do that faster? Patience, patience, please. It takes a little to get into your pajamas when you're still half wet. Have a good evening, says Hans. I'm sure we will see each other again very soon. Now Hans makes himself comfortable in bed. After such an eventful day, I bet he will fall asleep quickly. Good night, Hans. At the fairgrounds, however, the Volksfest is only just getting started. Nightlife surely is coming to Wieselburg. The people of the town have been looking forward to this evening for a year. The pleasure rides are full, the crowds seem to be getting bigger and bigger. Many happy moments are celebrated until the early morning hours. It looks like the variety show with the beautiful ladies is one of the main attractions. Let's check it out. Oh, now we've run out of film, but we still need the last few feet to introduce our filmmaker, Mr. Franz Bauer. And now, I hope that you had a lot of fun with our film, Volksfest 1957.